in One Step Beyond's Mysteries of the Brain, we've encountered malfunctioning brains which we're only beginning to understand, and malfunctioning brains that have been trained back to full fitness. Yet there are some brains which seem to be dysfunctional, but are actually in perfect working order. Alan Bannister is a retired engineer from Manchester in England. Four and a half years ago, Alan started experiencing strange hallucinations, such as appearances of men wearing large brim hats. But his most common hallucination involves large square blackboards floating in front of his eyes. I get these impressions of blackboards, which are about the si size of an A5 sheet held at about 30 centimetres. It's broken up into a series of irregular rectangles, and each of these rectangles is written up with its own individual formula. 78-year-old Joan Lever also hails from Manchester. Since the year 2000, she too has been experiencing very strange hallucinations. And I was sat staring and the animal just came out. It's like a big black furry one, but I don't know what the animal was. I can't, I can't put a name to it, dog, cat. But it, yeah, it was big. Alan and Joan have Charles Bonnet syndrome. It's named after an 18th century Swiss philosopher whose grandfather was seeing things that simply weren't there. Perhaps if I would have had somebody to talk to about it, I wouldn't have been as frightened. I wouldn't have thought I was going, you know, out of my mind. It might seem as though Alan's and Joan's brains are malfunctioning, but they're not. In fact, their brains are overcompensating because of their poor eyesight. Stephen Doyle is a Manchester-based ophthalmologist. Of the 2,800 patients Dr. Doyle treats at his practice, three, including Sylvia here, have Charles Bonnet syndrome. And I can't understand why do I look up and see a plane in the sky? And yet I'm looking at you now and I can't see your face. The causes of Charles Bonnet syndrome are really anything that can cause degradation of your vision. People most affected by, by Charles Bonnet syndrome are the elderly, because they're the ones that tend to have the, uh, the eye problems. What happens with Charles Bonnet syndrome is that the brain compensates for loss of visual input by projecting images from the occipital cortex, the part of the brain responsible for processing vision. Alan, Joan and Sylvia all have visual impairment to varying degrees. So we have a massive visual input into our consciousness. And if this is destroyed in some way or degraded, then our brain wants to make up the um, image from its own memories, so it, it tries to fill in the spaces. What Dr. Doyle can't account for, though, is why certain people only see certain images when they hallucinate. Why Sylvia sees phantom planes, Joan animals, or Alan hats and blackboards. In London, there's one man who can. Dr. Dominic Fitch from the Institute of Psychiatry is trying to throw light on this with MRI scans of Charles Bonnet patients whilst they're hallucinating. The coloured areas are ones that are specialised for different visual attributes. So here we have uh, the area specialised for colours, here we have the area specialised for objects, uh, here for faces, face holes, and here for face part representations, and over here uh, for extended landscape scenes. In Bonnet syndrome sufferers, these are the areas of the brain that are overreacting to compensate for the loss of visual input from the eyes. What you're actually hallucinating is a reflection of which bits of the visual brain are lighting up, which bits are firing when they shouldn't be, uh, because that defines the content of what you hallucinate. There's no cure for Charles Bonnet syndrome, but the best way to deal with it is to talk about it with people like health professional Maggie Harrison from the Henshaw Society for the Blind in Manchester. 
but they're coming closer. They seem to be going right into my eyes. What you're describing, yes. a lot of people describe. One of the problems with Charles Bonnet syndrome is they're frightened to death of going mad. So to, to release that fear by talking about it and having other people know that it exists makes such a difference. Neuroscientists have discovered that there are more neurons in the human brain than there are stars in the whole galaxy. It's little wonder then that the workings of this complex organ remain as mysterious and unknown as the vast universe itself.